We've known for decades that badgers uh, can give TB to cattle. Uh, we know that they do it, but we haven't known how. So what we did uh, was to uh, you know, track badgers and cattle simultaneously. So we used two approaches. Um, the first was to try to understand how often badgers and cattle come into close proximity. And so to do that, we used one of these. This is a, a badger collar. Um, it's a ultra high frequency radio collar, so that is beeping every, you know, very, very frequently, uh, a, 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 an identifiable radio signal. And it's, it's detectable by this collar, which goes on the cow. So this is a small collar for a badger, big collar for a cow. Um, and this is tuned down so that the, the cow collar detects the badger collar only when the two come very close together, within about two meters. Um, and so the idea of that was to be able to try to detect uh, uh, contact between badgers and cattle close enough for disease transmission to happen. Uh, and what we found was that the cattle wearing these collars spent the equivalent of a total, all the cattle added together, of about eight years within the home ranges of badgers wearing these collars. And yet throughout all of that time, we actually detected no contacts between the two. There's another line of evidence which gives us a little bit more information about, uh, about this apparent lack of contact between badgers and cattle. And that uses these same cattle collars. And so this is a GPS collar. It's got a GPS antenna in the top here. It works just like the sat nav on your car. Uh, so it records every 20 minutes where that collar is. So we know exactly where that cow is every 20 minutes, 24 seven. At the same time, we have a much smaller version of more or less the same thing. This is a GPS collar for a badger. You can likewise see the GPS antenna on the top recording uh, badger locations to the same timetable. So what we can then do is we can take all those simultaneous locations, we can say how far apart are the badgers and the cattle. What we found was that despite having 65,000 simultaneous badger cattle location pairs, we never found the two species less than 10 metres apart. So we have uh, identified through this study, we've identified that TB transmission is happening through the environment. What we need to do now is pinpoint where in the environment the, uh, the bacteria are most likely to be found and most likely to be encountered by badgers and cattle. So what we're doing now is we've uh, initiated a project uh, funded by the Biotechnology and Biological Sciences Research Council in partnership with the University of Warwick uh, and we're using molecular genetics to uh, sample the environment, to sample soil, to sample slurry, to sample badger feces and cow dung and water troughs and so on, to, and then using these molecular tools to detect the bacteria in the environment. And by doing that, we should be able to quantify you know, how many bacteria there are and where they're concentrated. At the same time, continuing the badger and cattle tracking. So we should be able to see you know, where do the badgers and cattle uh, tend to uh, encounter these bacteria.